Chacos, Bolivia here in Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A U.S. Embassy official in Bolivia told Peace Corps volunteers and a Fulbright scholar to, quote, spy on Venezuelans and Cubans in the country. This according to an ABC News report. Assistant Regional Security Officer Vincent Cooper reportedly told the group of Peace Corps volunteers in July 2007, at least one Fulbright scholar in November of 2007, to, quote, keep tabs on the Cubans and Venezuelans they came across in Bolivia. The U.S. Embassy in Bolivia has also been using American taxpayer money to help fund opposition groups, according to an article in the Progressive magazine. Two years into the embattled presidency of Bolivia's Evo Morales, the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID, has funneled over $4 million to support Morales' opponents. In August 2007, Bolivian Vice President Alvaro Garcia Linera accused the U.S. Embassy of financing opposition groups, and presidential Minister Juan Ramon de la Quintana said the Bush administration was working to undermine the Bolivian government and foster instability. We want to say in the most respectful, firm and responsible way that if the United States does not adjust to the policies of the Bolivian government, then the doors are open to leave. We are not going to permit one day more in which this form of cooperation pollutes our democracy conspires against the right of our people or offends our national dignity. I interviewed President Evo Morales in September 2007 here in New York along with Juan Gonzalez and asked him what he thought of allegations the U.S. is funding opposition groups in Bolivia. Ex-ministros, ex-viceministros del gobierno uh, de Gonzalo Sánchez Lozada, que se escapó a Estados Unidos. Former ministers and vice ministers of the government of Gonzalo Sánchez de Lozada, who, as you know, escaped to the United States. Del expresidente de eh, Banzer, que en paz descanse, como también de Tutu Quiroga. And the former President Banzer, who may he rest in peace, as well as former President uh, Tutu Quiroga. Es financiado. No? These former ministers are financed. Mediante eh, fundaciones, ONGs. Through foundations and GOs. Para crear ese contrapeso al gobierno de Estados Unidos, al gobierno de Evo Morales, perdón. To the government of Evo Morales. Es impresionante. It's Quisiéramos impressive. que cualquier cooperación sea transparente, que entre por el gobierno nacional. Pero And what we're hay... asking for is that all international cooperation be transparent, that it come through formally the central government. What are those groups pushing for? Primero, um, el plan que tiene la derecha, los neoliberales. Los vende patrias, como decimos allá. First of all, es, the, the, these uh, neoliberals, the, the, the right-wing organizations, the ones who have sold out the, the country, as we say in Bolivia. Es desgastar la imagen de Evo Morales, especialmente. Is to exhaust the image of Evo Morales, especially. Y pues ese tiene un objetivo. Si quieren desgastar es hasta acabar con el gobierno de Evo Morales. And so they have an objective. If they want to exhaust Evo Morales, it's to be done with the government of Evo Morales. President Evo Morales. Meanwhile, the State Department has denied allegations it's using aid funds to undermine the Morales government. They also told ABC News the U.S. Embassy official who tried to obtain intelligence from Peace Corps volunteers and Fulbright scholars had acted, quote, in error. Rutgers University graduate Alexander Van Schaik is the Fulbright scholar who told ABC News he'd been asked to spy on Venezuelans and Cubans by U.S. Embassy official Vincent Cooper. Alexander joins me on the phone right now from Cochabamba. We're also joined on the phone from La Paz, Bolivia, by reporter Jean Friedman Rodofsky, who broke the ABC story. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Alexander Van Schaik, tell us what happened in November. Hi, Amy. Thanks. Um, well, what happened basically is I arrived in Bolivia to start my Fulbright grant um, in La Paz, and first 
first sort of step before you go and start doing your own research is to go through an orientation, which is pretty standard um, at the U.S. Embassy because the um, main Fulbright officer in Bolivia is based out of the U.S. Embassy. So that part was uh, pretty normal, just uh, sort of talking about the Fulbright program, stuff like that, talking about living in Bolivia. I met with a cultural affairs officer uh, in the embassy. Now, the part, obviously, that's um, more controversial is uh, I was taken to a security briefing um, on the security floor of the embassy. Um, it was given to me by a man named Vincent Cooper. Uh, it was just me and him in the room. And again, for most of the time, it was pretty standard. Uh, stuff like, you know, how not to put yourself in danger, how to live in Bolivia, uh, what not to do, stuff like that. Um, but the part that obviously uh, uh, raised the flags in my, in, my, in my mind was when he told me, um, if you should encounter any Venezuelan or Cubans in the field, um, uh, doctors, field workers, etc., uh, the embassy would like you to report their names and something like where they're located uh, to the embassy. Uh, and then he said, because we know they're out there, we just want to keep tabs on them. Um, and that, that, that's pretty much the extent of, of the ask, as it were. And what did you say? Uh, I actually, at the time, didn't say anything because the, the first thought that popped into my mind was, oh, oh my God, uh, the U.S., uh, this U.S. Embassy official just asked me to spy. <laughs> and I didn't want to sort of confront him on that um, directly. I, I immediately was thinking, what can I do? Because this is obviously wrong, obviously against what the Fulbright program is about. What can I do to change this so that it doesn't happen again? What made you decide to go public with this? Um, there's there's a couple different uh, there's a couple different reasons, and it by by no means was it an easy decision, which is part of the reason why it, it's coming out now and not in November or December. Um, but my main reasons are. Uh, I guess I feel like the Bolivian people really have a right to know because this is their government. Uh, Bolivia, you know, the Bolivian people have the right to elect their own government, and the Bolivian government has the right to invite whoever it pleases to work in their country. Um, so I saw this as a violation of sovereignty and, um, and felt like I needed to speak out about it. Uh, the, other, the other reasons are... Uh, I guess I felt like in order to make uh, make a change, in order for this not to happen again, and also to, to hold those who are responsible accountable, that I'd have to sort of uh, I'd have to go to the press in order to uh, sort of put the pressure on uh, so that this would change. And I feel like that's really borne out by things that we've later discovered. Uh, through the investigation uh, into this uh, that was done by Gene. Um, for example, the fact that the, uh, th this guy, Vince Cooper, told this class of uh, Peace Corps volunteers basically the same thing he told me. And the Peace Corps administrators actually